Hello and welcome to another student interview. Today I've got Amanda with me. She's just wrapped up a Thanksgiving weekend with her family. She's taking some time to sit down and just kind of yeah give a backstory on her agency, how it's doing, her journey in the social media marketing world, and hopefully just kind of you know drop some tips, value, and strategies that have worked for her. That if you're watching this, you can maybe even replicate for your own business if you have an agency or if you're just looking to start. So really looking forward to this one. Amanda, thank you so much for joining me. No, thank you, Adam. <laughs> this is mostly because of you. So don't sell yourself short. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Cool, cool. Um, so yeah, you've been a student of the Six Figure Accelerator program for quite some months now. Don't know the exact number, but it's it's been a bit of time. And yeah. I guess... Yeah, just to kick it off, like, where are you currently at with your agency, whether that's number of clients, revenue, and yeah, where did you start from as well? Did you start from zero or did you already have some clients before you joined? Um, so I'll just, I'll take you back like to the very beginning first. So we get a little bit of context. Um, so I went to college for social media management. Mm -hmm. um, I was a media studies communications major and in my senior year, which was last year, um, I came across you on Instagram and I just thought like this could probably add value to my current business. I was freelancing at the time. I'd been freelancing. I've had, you know, probably 30, 40 clients freelancing. And, you know, I, I thought it was time to actually start my business. So, um, you know, I joined the program and then, you know, within a, within only a few days, I had already signed more clients than I had in the past couple months. And, um, I had finished the class fairly early, but I've always been doing some sort of social media work. Um, I guess now I'm just really doubling down, you know, after, you know, the six figure accelerator program. Nice. But yeah. Okay. Solid. So like what kind of made you go from freelancing to like the agency model? Cause I was in a similar situation. I worked, you know, for quite some months, to be honest, as a freelancer. And for me, I just got burnt out very quickly. You know, I was like, I want more, right? I want to make way more, but how am I going to do that? Like I'm already working. I was, I think yeah. I was working like 40 hours a week. So I was like, this is obviously not scalable. Yeah. Well, so when I was in college, um, I just didn't really have time to do everything myself. Um, and I, then I realized, you know, after joining the program that like, I should be hiring VAs, I should be doing X, Y, and Z. And, and it just like kind of opened my eyes to like, I don't need to be doing all of this myself. Like, why am I sitting here for four hours messaging people when that's really not the structure that's going to make me the most successful. So it yeah. was kind of, then when I, it was kind of then when I realized like the workload that I had already had with my other things, podcasting, you know, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, that I could kind of put my all into this, but also like not be all there. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Right. It's like all in, in terms of build the right systems, build the structure, like you said, hire a couple of VAs, but so that you can get more out of it with less time. Cause like, right. that, that's right. really the goal of, of any business owner, right. It's to have it so that it can make you money without you working 24 seven. Right. Awesome. Awesome. And like, I guess, like, you know, something I'd want to dive into there is like, what was the, the biggest shift that you had to make, whether it was like on a mindset level from going from freelancer to like agency owner, or it was just in terms of structuring the business. Was there anything that stands out that you had to change to make that switch? Um, I mean, I think it's just, a, I think it's just more of a, a switch in like mentality of, you know, this could make me a few hundred bucks every week, or it could make me a few thousand dollars a month. Like I, I didn't realize the full value of running a social media marketing agency really until I started consistently reaching out. And then I was like, Oh wow. Like I can do this full time. Like, you know, I don't need to work a nine to five. I can just be doing this. So I think that's when I realized the full potential that it had, that was when I had a, the mindset change for sure. Yeah. For, for me as well, I definitely, I had to go through that as well, you know, of like going from I'm worth, you know, let's say $15 an hour. That was like my, that was my thinking, right? Because that's what, that's what I had done to then being like, no, I'm going to be worth 
x per month and it's like a completely different shift but it it has to happen for sure so you know if anyone's watching if you're in a job or if you're a freelancer like that's probably how you think you're probably thinking i get paid for x hours and i get paid per hour running an agency you don't get paid per hour right you obviously right. get paid on a monthly basis it's a completely different setup so yeah i think a lot of people kind of struggle with that as well when they when they first start yeah. just making that switch it's not the easiest yeah, it's thing also to do. It's also really scary because, you know, anything that's not along the beating path, like regular nine to five, everyone's really scared to become an entrepreneur and, and, you know, kind of just go for it. So I think half of the battle for me was, you know, doing something more foreign than what my friends were doing and kind of just going off and doing my own thing. And, you know, people always are going to have something to say. So they're like, oh, being an agency owner is so stupid. And I'm like, really? Is it? Because... I'm pretty sure it's going very well right now. <laughs> so Sense, once you get yeah. over, once you get over, yeah, what everyone is saying and everyone's going to talk at first, but you know, it's definitely worth being your own boss for sure. Yeah, for sure. And like for you, Amanda, did you always have that? Like, did you always have that mindset? Because for a lot of people, like again, like they, that's really scary. You know, it's really scary to like not do what your friends think you should do or what your parents think you should do. So like, what kind of sparks that with you? You know, was it like just a, a light bulb moment or did you always have that in you? Um, I I pretty much always had that in me. I started, you know, really young modeling and, you know, I, I became an influencer like way before I was even 18. So mm -hmm. I have that whole side of social media. And then once I started getting into like modeling agencies and I was signing with companies, um, they had social media managers and I was like, this is really cool. Like, I want to do something like this. Um, so I think it was, it was, it was just being thrown into the industry very young and seeing these people be very successful doing entrepreneurship, social media, everything like that, that really like sparked it for me. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And, you know, so for you, it's, it's social media, right? Like you don't run any Facebook ads or paid ads. It's just purely social media management, right? Yeah, my my agency, we offer full management, um, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I've even ran Snapchats. I've ran OnlyFans accounts. So really, like, it, it's it's mostly everything that I have experience in. Like, mm -hmm. I would never sign a client for something that I haven't personally been successful with. For sure. Yes, yeah. so you're basically, yeah, like you said, taking anything you've done and then just just do that for someone else. That makes right. sense. Yeah. And, and out of those, like, which one do you think, which platform do you think is the easiest to run for a client? Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, OnlyFans. Is there, is there one that stands out of like, this is way easier or? Um, uh, I think OnlyFans is definitely one of the easiest to run because there's a whole strategy behind it that people don't realize. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been doing it for quite some time. So uh, girls will come to me and say, you know, this is really hard. I don't know how to run my page. Um, and then that's where I kind of step in and, you know, offer them some help with that. Um, but I think OnlyFans is definitely my number one. And I probably helped 10 to 12 girls with that. And then otherwise Instagram, because that's probably been the longest platform I've been on. So I have a lot of experience with that um, from the business side and from the influencer side as well. So yeah, damn, that's that's so interesting because I have heard of people running like OnlyFans agencies, you know, like a full <laughs> stack where, you know, let's say a model will send their photos in a Google Drive folder to the agency and they'll basically just come up with like all the captions, they'll schedule all the content and like you said, have that full strategy behind it. But I've never gotten to speak to someone who's actually doing that. So like, um, yeah, I guess I'm just super curious. I'm sure other people are like, what would that strategy look like? Would it be that there's different types of content, right? Like some content to upsell people into custom photos and, and different upsells. And obviously then there's certain content probably to retain people, right? To keep them paying the monthly subscription and, and hooked on the on that profile per se. Right. So there's it's it's actually like a little bit more strategic than that because mm -hmm. you know there's certain months. I mean, certain weeks out of the month that people are going to have more money to spend. So like 
I would never send, you know, a high tier message in the first week of the month because I know that my subscribers have just paid their rent, paid their bills, et cetera. So it's a, it's a little bit more strategic with like um, certain days, certain times of the day, mostly like Instagram as well. There's, there's great times to post and then there's terrible times to post. Yeah. Um, so it, it's kind of the same in that way where um, to make the most money, you definitely have to be very strategic with what you're sending when you're sending it. Um, so yeah, I think there's, there's a little bit of a stigma around it for sure. But um, I do know people who have like cooking shows on OnlyFans. Um, they run like fitness classes um, and the strategy does apply to kind of everyone who is on the platform. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like it's just like any other platform like Patreon. It's just that right. usually it's, it's attracted a certain type of person to, to use it, I guess. But like, yeah, hundred percent. Like I, I, I respect anything like that because it's like, it's opportunity, like opportunities everywhere, whether it's, you know, when TikTok launched, right. There was obviously people that were like, Oh, I'm just going to start a TikTok agency just the exact same thing as that. There's always going to be people that need their content managed, whether it's OnlyFans, uh, if it's an email list, whether it's Instagram, that's always going to be a thing. So yeah, no, I absolutely love that. It's super unique. Again, I haven't really heard anyone doing it. So I think that could even be a path, you know, that you might even eventually niche completely down into of like the OnlyFans agency by someone who actually does it as well, because that's going to build more trust more authority and people will know that you actually know what you're doing as well. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, um, definitely interesting to say the least. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, <laughs> cool. And like, you know, in terms of getting your clients, Amanda, you, you mentioned that, you know, so far you've actually gotten quite a lot of referrals, right? Like a lot of the people you've worked with have come to you because they've maybe seen what you're doing or one of their friends is a client of yours. And it's just kind of that, that loop of you getting those inbound leads. So I would imagine for you, a lot of, you know, what you're doing, right. Of how you're getting clients comes down to your service. It comes down to the quality of your service. Whereas some people might have a good service, but they're really good at sales, you know, and they can kind of be more aggressive with selling and, but maybe their service is not so good. But for mm -hmm. you, it's, it's quite the opposite, right? So maybe if you could drop any kind of like tips or anything that you do without obviously revealing your exact system, <laughs> right? Yeah. That helps you get good results for your clients. Is it like a lot of communication or is it just that you're really, really good at what you do? Um, well, I'm a big believer in being versatile with mm -hmm. any kind of business. So you know, like we were just talking about, even though I've managed lawyers and authors and hotels, I also do OnlyFans and I also yeah. am a streamer. So I, I never want to narrow my client down to like one thing, even though I know you're supposed to have a niche. Um, I've had a lot of success with just posting different things. And um, like I said, word of mouth has been really big for me. And I think that's just because when when you're appealing to multiple crowds when you're appealing to multiple different industries you're going to see better results as that's just common <laughs> everyone always is going to like different things and you know your niche might be lawyers but what if i could get more clients if i appealed to hairdressers um but the word of the word of mouth marketing um has, has got me a lot of clients, um, definitely within my town, which is weird because I don't live at home. Um, hey. I think people, I think people just see me on Instagram kind of just posting little things here and there, and then they become interested. So I think it's a lot about marketing myself as well. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, you, so you touched on a lot there, right? It's kind of like, you know, the having multiple niches serving, pretty much anyone that you can serve. Um, and it's very interesting because it's like I, as you know, with my agency, we do have a niche, right? Where it's like, we've always kind of been in that, but there are people I know that do not have a niche, you know, and they simply just have an agency that has one service and they have scaled that up incredibly well. So the boat approaches can definitely work um, as long as like, you know, your strong points. And if your strong yeah. point is, like you said, kind of like that versatility and being able to have any business come to you and for you to be able to understand what they need and to then map out a strategy for that 
like that makes so much sense I know yeah. with my agency like that was definitely something that kind of scared me what right it was like well if a lawyer comes to me I'm like I'm clueless or if a real estate agent comes to me I'm like I don't know anything about real estate so I always knew that that would be a big struggle yeah and well when I actually joined your class and learned I think it was in like chapter three that you should have a niche I kind of did try and put myself in a box with Mm -hmm. uh, law firms and hotels but I still had people coming to me asking me you know hey I saw that you're focusing on law firms and hotels like does that mean that you can still help me get brand deals for my podcast can you still help me do this and that and then obviously that's not going to work for everybody but I didn't I didn't personally want to put myself in a box because I do like helping everyone. That's, that's why I started my, that's why I started my agency and, you know, started sharing what I know about certain industries with other people is because, you know, I always say, and it's kind of cliche, but if I can do it, anybody can do it. (laughs) Nice. I like that. I like that. Um, But yeah, like that makes so much sense where like, if a business is coming to you, like, you know, for you to then turn them away and be like, no, 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 no. Like you're not a lawyer. I'm not going to help you. Yeah, that doesn't really make that much sense. Um, right. I think for anyone listening, if if you can get like inbound clients, right? Like you've a good personal network or a good personal brand, then the more general approach, I think definitely works better. On the flip side, if you don't have that and you're like going out to businesses, like you're messaging them for the first time, that's when I really believe a niche works really well because they see you as like the go-to person, you know, like the go-to agency for lawyers real estate agents or whatever it is so yeah like you said it really just depends right of where you're at you know are you going out to businesses are they coming to you uh, or what does that that structure look like cool and so kind of like on the team structure then amanda like what does that look like right you mentioned that you've got um well you started to look into like vas and bringing other people on board once you made that switch from freelancer to an agency owner so who have you hired uh, for what positions? And yeah, like what kind of difference has that made so far? Uh, well, first, uh, when I set out to create my agency, I knew that I wanted to be fully um, women-based. Cool. So I, I, only, I only hire women. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've gotten some interns from local colleges. Um, I live in Boston. So I've had some interns from BU, BC, um, I actually had an intern from Harvard as well. Um, and that's just kind of what my, my agency structure is like. I, I'm just, you know, hiring interns, teaching them a little bit at a time of what I know. Um, but right now I only have two interns at the moment. Hey, yeah. Like, you know, that in itself is, it's unique as well. Like, cause I've, I've never actually spoke with someone that has uh, like just women only or just men only in their agency. So that's super interesting. Um, and I'd imagine, you know, that's going to be like, it's going to work really well, like long term, right? Because if you kind of build up that reputation as like the go to agency, to, not just like to be a client of, but to work for, because you can come into like a super uh, maybe supportive environment that you're going to learn a lot in, that alone is probably going to be super, super helpful as well. And the fact that you have interns, you know, I don't know many people that have brought on interns, you know, it's usually just a, they just hire like a freelancer on, on upwork.com or maybe even Fiverr. And that's kind of their, their first person that they bring on. Yeah. I really wanted my, my company to feel like, like a family. Like I'm, mm. I'm big on like women's empowerment. Um, obviously with the, the only fans as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of my goal is to like make women feel confident and beautiful and just all, all around like empowered and yeah. whatever they choose to do. So that was also a big, um, a big decision that I had to make when I created my agency because um, I didn't want to just ignore the men <laughs> because they are actually my my biggest demographic. But um, yeah, I think it's it's important that your company isn't just a company; it's like a family. Yeah, for sure. You gotta have you know values. You gotta have you gotta have structure, but you know it's got to be a good place to work. You know, if people come into your agency and they get paid lots of money but they hate it you know that's not what anybody wants right yeah Yeah. not gonna end well no definitely definitely okay awesome awesome and like 
where, where do you see this going? Let's just say for the next six months. Now, I'm a firm believer of like, you know, thinking about the future, you know, planning out where you're going to get to and, and what you're going to need to do to get there. At the same time, things can change, right? So I know when I set yearly goals, those yearly goals change quite a bit, you know, like uh, some of them I achieve, some of them I don't, and some of them I've just completely thrown in the bin because I'm like, you know, life changed, <laughs> right? Like motives are different. So if everything was perfect, you knew exactly what you're going to be and where you're going to be in six months, where are you with your agency? Obviously, you've got your other businesses aside, but with the marketing business, where do you see that going? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, that's really put me on the spot. Um, I would like to, I would like to have at least five solid employees. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, doing outreach, um, all that fun stuff. And I definitely like to have 10 clients. That's my goal is I've never had 10 clients at once. And I know that mm -hmm. sounds pretty scary, but I would, I would like to have some solid clients. I would like to have some solid employees and everybody wins, I guess. Nice. That's one thing. I just want everyone to win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Um, it's a good, uh, long-term view, right? Cause if, if you're going in with that mindset, not just of you just want to make money at the expense of someone else, that's, yeah. that's not going to work too good. <laughs> yeah. I never really, I never really focus on like a money goal because then if I don't hit that, I get like upset. Like yeah. I could have tried, could I have tried harder? What could I have done different? So I never want to like put that pressure on myself to make a certain amount of money in a certain amount of time. Because if you're, if you're being consistent with your messaging and, you know, doing what you should be doing, I think the money will just come. It will just oh, yeah. come in. hundred percent. Yeah. Like if, you know, there's a, there's a saying, you know, income follows impact. And if, like you said, your, your goal is definitely impact oriented. You know, if you want to build a community, um, a family, plus you want to have solid clients that you can help, like, yeah, that's probably going to get you way further than just saying, hey, I want 10K or 20 or 30K a month. Because like you said, you're going to get very annoyed if you don't hit that in a certain month because we're emotional beings. Um, so that kind of just makes it easier, I would say, for you to stay consistent and to actually hit that goal. Yeah, I think, and especially for anybody watching, like if you're just starting out an agency or you're starting freelance work, I would never set out with the intention of just making money off of a client. Yeah. I would make the intention, I want to help this client do X, Y, and Z. And if you do a good job, then you'll get rewarded all the time. Exactly. Exactly. If you do a good job, the money is going to come. You know, it's like right. you don't get rich off one client, right? That's not how you're going to get to six figures a year or whatever number a year. You're going to get there from the clients that stay with you for six, nine, 12 months. And you keep that going. You get five clients that stay with you and then you get 10 and 15 and 20. Um, but also, Amanda, something that you mentioned there, I just want to just dive into really, really quickly is that you want to have like that solid team, right? You said like five people in the company as employees working with you. The beauty of that in your situation is that as your other businesses start to grow along with your agency, you're probably going to need help with those as well. And I found this with my two businesses, right? It's like when the agency started growing and then my personal brand started to grow, I needed a graphic designer. You know, I needed a video editor. I needed someone mm -hmm. to help with a bit of social media. And there's the tie over, there's the crossover. And that's a really, really nice thing. If anybody's watching this and you have multiple businesses, there's a couple of people in this program that have like uh, one main biz business and their agency is a side business. There's actually this huge overlap that I've personally found. And I know that you're going to find as well, as you start to build those up, the people you hire in the agency may actually work 50% of the time or 30% of their time in those other businesses as well, which is just pretty cool because it just means you have you know, one employee that can serve you and your companies in many ways. Right. Yeah. I think and I've also seen that too, because one of my interns, um, she, she goes to BU, which I lived around the campus. I, I know what goes on around there. <laughs> and <laughs> she was just very curious, you know, about my podcast and she, and she worked at a radio station. So she asked like, Hey, can, can I like learn some things from you about podcasting? And I was like, sure. Like, why not? You're already, yeah. you're already doing a really good job, you know, learning about marketing agencies. Like if you ever potentially want to get into podcasting or streaming, like why not learn right now? 
hundred percent, hundred percent. And that's just like an extra bonus for your intern, right? Or your employee, like there's more opportunities for her to learn more and it's things that she's actually interested in as well. So again, it's just a win-win. And yeah. just to wrap it up then, Amanda, we always want to leave people with kind of, you know, whether it's a, a piece of advice or uh, a mindset shift that you think people need to have, whatever it is, uh, the floor is yours. Anything that you want to tell to people, whether they are just starting out or, you know, a lot of people that watch these videos are, they haven't even started yet. You know, they're just thinking about it. They're contemplating, mm -hmm. they're deciding if starting an agency is for them or if they want to start some other business. So I guess, what would you say to that person? Leave them with some, with some wisdom. For someone who's just starting out or thinking about starting, I think my biggest piece of advice is don't listen to anybody else. Don't care what anybody else says. If you want to do it, you just got to go for it. And you, you can't really do it 50%. You can't really do it 40%. If you're about, if you're going to throw yourself into a situation that, like I said, is, is foreign, then some of your friends, you see your friends have these really cushy, safe nine to five jobs and it's, it's going to scare you. My advice is just go all in. Hell yeah. I love it. Love it. Couldn't agree more because you're always going to have Errors are always going to have the doubters, people that don't want you to do what you're doing. But as long as you know that you want to do it, that's all you need. So awesome stuff, Amanda. Um, before we go, obviously, we want you to plug your socials so people can connect with you, oh, whether boy. it's whichever you want to plug, you can, <laughs> you can decide on that. And we can obviously drop whatever you want into the description as well. So that if people want to reach out and they want to potentially work as an intern with your company, or they simply want to just learn more about your story, uh, where can they connect yeah. with you? Yeah, definitely. Um, feel free to reach out on, on any social. My Instagram is amanda.mo. My Snapchat is amanda-mo. And my OnlyFans is also amanda.mo. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> reach out. Yeah, just feel free. I don't discriminate. I don't judge. Just feel free to, you know, let me know what you're thinking, like what your thoughts are. I, I'd like to pick some of your brands for anyone watching. Cool. Awesome, guys. Uh, go ahead and do that. Definitely give some give some feedback to Amanda as well, because she's given some really good tips here. Things that you might not hear from me because she's got a whole different perspective and different you know, way of running her business. Um, so, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, do leave a like, make sure you are subscribed. And if you are thinking about joining the Six Figure Accelerator program, of course, we will leave a link to that in the description below. So yeah, we'll just leave with you that. Uh, have a good rest of your day and we will see you soon. Thanks.